Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Real Hacker Hour podcast. This is basically where I just do the normal work on side projects that I normally do. Just hit the record button sometimes. Right now I'm just hopefully going to finish up implementing just the RFC specific logic for this FTP fuzzer. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just going through the commands of like one by one currently listed off. Uh, where was I? Did the PWD, so next command is quit. Um, I'm just going to be implementing these commands one by one. That way the FTP fuzzer will be able to perfectly emulate an RFC compliant client. That way by able to sending valid data, we're going to be able to actually hit more code, a, lot, a ton more code paths on the server versus just sending random data effectively. So, without further ado, let's continue. Quit. I'm pretty sure this command, similar to the buy command, where we just effectively just send it. Oh, wait. FTP example. Pretty sure this is just a single command we send. No argument. Let's take a quick look just to make sure. Quit. Yeah, it looks about right. So let's just write it. Def cnd quit. Okay, and let's test this function. Let's start a PCAP and then look at the tr network data transfer. Hang on. Oh, I did on the wrong interface. I sh it should be loop back since I have the address configured to be 127.001. So options. Okay, that was seg faulted. That's interesting. Might want to look into that later. Okay, cool. But for now. So. What I'm seeing here is we can see it sends the quick command twice and it only acknowledges one of them. And we see here that the fuzzer is hanging. Now, why is this? FTP is a session-based protocol, meaning that, like, when you connect to an FTP server, previous commands, well, there's a state associated with the connection. Look, for instance, here, we have to authenticate before we can actually run commands. This quick command effectively will terminate that connection. So, what does that mean for us? That will mean that... Every time you run the quick command in order to get valid RFC compliant traffic flowing, we're going to need to reinitialize the connection. Fortunately, I've already implemented logic to effectively signify if we're already in the middle of the session or we aren't. And if we aren't, automatically just reinitialize a session. Actually, that's just check right here if connection established, then this function will effectively reinitialize the connection by reaching back out and then using these two commands. So what should we do first? We need to oh. since this check happens, this check is where it actually will see, hey, we need to reinitialize the connection. We can't have multiple quick commands running for each time this check is running. So I just effectively made this loop run 10 times that way. For each quick command, there will be a subsequent check. Now, bringing us to the next thing we need to do. We need to go down here. I already implemented this command. Yeah, 
Um, the second thing we need to do was add this line right here, but I just pulled a smooth brain command. I already implemented this. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this and post it down here. See, I effectively send the quick command and then this variable, and which is stored in the fuzzer FTP, well, FTP fuzzer, I believe is the class name. We just set this equal to false, signifying that the connection is over. And let's try rerunning this. So looking at this, we see a single quick command. Now, since it reinitializes the, the connection, that means there's an actual new network connection, meaning that there's a new stream. So if you look at the subsequent TCP streams, quick command, yeah, we see they're basically the same thing. I'm going to skip ahead to four. Yeah, okay, so this looks like it's working. I'm just going to go ahead and change this back. Wait. And let's see what's the next command. R-E-I-N, reinitialize the connection. I'm just going to try sending the command first and seeing what happens. Right here. So let's write the function. Self. Self.send. CMD. Okay, cool. And let's try running this. And let's see what the server says. Okay, let's see. And that command is not implemented. Is there an RFC specified with there? No. I'm going to try looking at the syntax. Sets the FTP connection to the state. It is when the client first connects to the app. So it looks like effectively, yeah, it resets the connect according to what this is saying. It just resets the, the FTP session back to where the state, as in a server or a client, just connected back to it. With that, it doesn't look like it new connection is actually established because if you think about it if a new connection was completely established then how would it differ from like the quick command so yeah i'm pretty sure for this we can just leave it as just sending the rain command i say rain r-e-i-n cool let's move on to the next one Re rest for restart it has an RFC associated with it. Let's take a look. What is this? Three six five nine. Cool. File size. Restart. Restart of interrupted transfer. Cool to avoid. Okay. Here is the part of it to avoid FTP. This next, like, probably minute is just going to be me, like, looking through this RFC portion to understand what this command does and how it operates. What is the syntax for this?
Okay, so what it looks like this is, so what is this, this command used for? It's used to restart a transfer of a previously interrupted file transfer. That way you can just pick off from, oh, about pick up from where you left off the transfer. Now, what it's looking like here is you can just send the command rest followed by a number. That number represents how many octets or 8 byte values of that file you've received or sent so far. So, in order to implement this, what does that mean? It means... It would have to follow a previous store or receive command. So, one thing you could potentially do is with, okay, this is for sending, uploading a file, that situation. I'll get into why I'm specifying that out first in a second. What we might be able to do is just have some, um, an option for when it's at actually sending the data, I'll just cut it off and then automatically just send the rest command followed by the amount of bytes set and just continue retransmitting. Now, reason why I say only for uploading files, hmm. We could also, I was thinking, but no, we could probably also do that for download files. Anyway, I'm going to start talking and actually try to implement this. So... Let's take a look at action create file. I'm going to be implementing the, using this as kind of like the test bed to test out that functionality. So let's first make sure that this is working. Reset this packet capture. Okay, store, cool. So, what I'm going to do, diff action, create file, cool, here it is. Let's look at this function right here. This function is actually responsible for sending the data, so this is probably where I want to implement the actual restart logic here. Okay, first off, let's get rid of the printing and just receive the data. Not really dealing with what we have to implement, but just doing this now. So don't have to do it later. Probably I'll also want to change it from just a sta static buff or size to maybe something else to ensure that I get all the data. Now, Let's see if transfer port data transfer pass fee pass fee it connects to the server that doesn't really matter. What I'm going to want to look at is when it sends data. Let's server com dot send. Restart. I'm just gonna. Right now, I'm just sending. Wait. Is this only sent by? Actually, I think I just might have made might have made a mistake. I need to take a second and reread this. Reason what I'm thinking is the rest command might only be sent by the opposite end of the protocol from the one sending it. So for instance, let's say here you have it that the yeah, the client is sending a port actually here in a second. So the client is retrie is yeah, retrieving data, meaning the server is sending data. However, the client is sending the restart command 
So it's probably whoever is receiving the data sends the rest command. I'm going to take a second and see if that's accurate. Okay, I'm back. So I did a bit of playing around. First off, when I was writing this, I made a smooth brain mistake. I was sending the command over the socket for actually uploading the file. Should have been sending it through the socket used for the FTP commands. But getting back to the question I had, right here we can clearly see that I, the position of the current FTP client uh, uploading data, I can send the rest command and it will accept it. And we see here in the RC it states that the receiver of data can also use the rest command. So I don't think it, with this information, I don't think it really matters if you're sending data or receiving data, you should be able to use the rest command. So now for how I will implement this. How, for sending the data, what I could do is, I c the first and easiest method is as I am effectively in this loop or in the two parts for sending data, I can just have a, um, like a conditional that's like if or while like random dot randit zero one is equal to zero or one or something like that, it will continually do rest commands with a red randomly generated octet value, and the additional data that I am sending will just be random data. Um, potential issues with that. That data that I'm sending probably, like, let's say if I'm saying, hey, I want to restart from position 50 in a file that I ever sent 100 bytes of, the additional data that I'm sending to replace that file contents will not be the same as the file contents I initially sent. Now, since this is a restart command, I don't think that would particularly matter too much. So for now, I'm probably going to go down that route. Um, if I wanted to go down the other route of making sure that all the data matched up, I'd probably just, in the FTP file class, add an additional field for size and actual file contents. Actually, that might not be... Uh, well, then I'd have to store a ton of data and memory. You know, I'm probably just going to keep doing it this simple, at least with the simple way for now. If problems arise later, I'll deal with it. So, how do I do this? Let's see. Data send. While random dot randint zero one rest octets equals So, octet restart octet equals, not sure what I want to set that to right now, I'm just going to leave it blank for now, I'll get back to it. So, the command we're sending is restart at the restart octet, which, which will be determined later, and then after that, we will be sending additional data. What will that be? Let's go with generate string. I should really ch edit this function so that max string length is just the default argument for it. Okay, cool. So, hmm. what can we do? What we can do, the, for restart octet, what we can do, we can get the length of the input data and then generate a random number between like zero and the length of that data and that will be our octet. And in addition to that, any additional space that we will write to it in subsequent rest calls 
we can just increment the length by the length of the yeah the length of the data which we're using to determine the bounds of the restart octet by the length of the additional data that we are generating to for the restart command. Cool. How are we going to do that? Let's do data length is equal to length of data. Restart octet equals random dot random zero data length. New data equals generate string max string length data. So decide where the octet that we're going to start from is send the command to specify the generate the new data that we're going to use or send as a result of this restart command next we're going to increment the total length of the data by the length of the new data we're sending that way we can adjust it for subsequent restart commands since how this so the reason why i'm using it like a while random dot random a function actually I should probably increment this to like two or something or that way you don't quite get the restarts as frequent reason why I'm doing it this way is we have entropy sometimes we'll have no restart commands other times we'll just have one other times we can have like five or even like 15 in a row um by having the while loop like this it kind of like organically will just create a lot of different permu all combinations of this. So, data socket. Why is it no? Oh, oh yeah, the data sockets is where we actually submit the data. Server does not. Need to change that. Okay, cool. Um, where does this leave us? This might work. Let's. I'm gonna edit this because right now we're uploading data, so either use this code right here, which is for uploading data from a port command configuration, or this command, which is for like uploading and sending data from a pass v data connection. So actually, this is bugging me. First off, why is server con? I'm gonna change this to data con. Don't know why that's then. Not gonna save it. Just instinctively hit Control S. Uh, data address. Keep heading. Nope. Okay, cool. Let's go back here. Okay, let's make sure they didn't break it. Okay, it's still running, which is good. No, let's configure this if. Oh, okay. For a second, I was just like confused as to why there was an if data is none if then statement, but then I remembered why that is. So let's do this. If send. Now we have the while random dot random zero one. We start off take equals. Random dot. Actually, this is pretty much at this point going to be a copy and paste of this code that I've written down here. Few minor changes. Data. It's going to be data com that's sending it. 
for yeah for for port commands the socket is listening so the versus for pass v commands the socket it actually connects out to a listening socket on the server side so the code is slightly different but i think this should work let's test it five bucks says i'm wrong Oh, okay, I accidentally left this restart 50 command. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, no restart there. Right now it's about a 50% chance of it happening, so it's to be expected. No, I'm going to include a print statement in here so we can see exactly when it is, when this code path is executed. Okay, cool. So we saw that for some reason when it actually is executing the restart functionality, for some reason it's not working right. Let's just take a quick look at it. Okay, I get the... You know what, here, I'm just going to change this to... If one is equal to one, this, that way we can guarantee that this code will run. And that way we can easily see in a Wireshark exactly what the issue is. Cool. One. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? I think what might be the issue here is looking at the code, we send the restart command and immediately, at, pretty much immediately after that, we generate and send the new data. We might need to parse for this 350 response and then actually send the data because what could be happening is it could be sending the data before. We could send the restart command and then send the data to the server before it's actually ready for that. So, how can we do that? I believe with the send CMD, I configured the second argument to be that we can pass it into a specifically parse for that. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, and the result of that is, it, and actually, let's see if this is what was causing the issue. No, it does not appear that that was the issue. First off, let's replace, 
just realized there was a mistake in my code. The data that I was sending to the server was different than the data that was actually being generated and assumed that I was going to be sent. Fix that. Now. Start position accepted. Why is it not actually taking the data? Or rather, hang on. I cannot receive data, I cannot transfer data. So issues happening here. Let's print this. What's going on here? Issue might be with how I'm parsing this. Okay, I'm going to... Wait, this is... Okay. Yeah, looking at this, I see that I include another print statement in this command to effectively return the... Return... Or yeah, print the return value from this function, which should be the parsed data. As we can see, nothing new got printed, so there's probably an issue with that. To determine what that is, easiest way that I can think of is just remove the try statement and see what error it provides us with. Just remove the try statement or just replace it with a simple if then statement. That way it will run without us having to really edit the tabs. And I'm a scrub that used tabs instead of spaces, so deal with it. Okay, cool. Now let's go with this. Let's unpack it. Return self dot receive message. Okay, second so try statement that we have to deal with is right here. So it's a timeout. Okay. This loop right here. Let's just print received data. So, for some reason, it appears that when it tries to receive another byte, for some reason, with this configuration, it's just not... Oh, I configured the timeout, so that's gonna... Here, I'm gonna try this. Let's reintroduce the... This command. So what I'm trying to do right now, figure out exactly what the issue with the parsing data is. Currently, what I'm doing to debug it is I'm just going to print all of the data that it effectively receives. Because effectively how I have this, this is the function responsible for 
actually receiving data and parsing it out. There are effectively two loops here. This loop here is when I'm interested in actually parsing out a particular string. This loop right here is responsible for effectively just parsing to a terminator. To, which like indicates the end of an FTP line. So let's try this. <sighs> Just to realize that received data, which I'm printing out, is only really incremented in here. So I'm going to do myself a favor and add that line. So it's received data actually keeps track of both. Hang on a second. Okay, what I'm what I just now realized that I'm probably doing that's a big mistake is looking at this syntax right here. It sends another pour command, meaning that it will set up another data transmission line and use that for the restart data that's being sent. I'm using the same one, so what's probably going on if that is the problem is effectively it's expecting to use a new stream for the data i'm not i'm just using the old one excuse me i have some makeups um so that would probably i probably just need to reset the transmission for the additional data or like the file being uploaded i should say so how can I do that? Well, action, create file. I'm just gonna copy this actually. Yeah, I'm gonna copy this into a new tab. Looking at this, this function sets up a data transfer. This function actually executes it. So what I'll probably will do, sorry, just bumped my mic, is make a call to this to set up a new data transfer and then execute this, basically make a recursive call, set up data transfer and then a recursive call to execute data transfer. Cool, gonna drag this out here like that. So let's get back to here. How will this work first off? Gonna delete all of that. Data socket equals this. File, file name equals that. The restart CMD equals B restart percent D random dot random zero data length so that specifies that we're re-uploading we will then send this command and then we will execute the data transfer I just realized we have a variable conflection here with this, so I'm going to change some variable names.
Microsoft.generate file contents. There are only three arguments to this function that to give, right? Yeah, three. <sighs> okay, cool. Let's see if this works. If it prints out a one, that means it's using the old method. If it's printing out a few zeros, it means it's using this new method I just coded. Say that like I discovered FTP or something. Okay, this is a bit interesting. It's for some reason sending multiple pass v in e PSV commands. I'm not sure why. So to save this from being like a two hour long video, I'm just gonna pause it for now, debug the issue, and then just come back and say what the issue was, B or B. Okay, cool. So I fixed the issues. There were multiple First off, the first issue I had, back when I had this as like an, this F then statement as an F1 is equal to 1, when it would make the recursive call, it would just, since this condition would always be true, this condition would execute, so it would always make the recursive call. Second ish, main issue that was remaining is the fact that with VSFTPD, if it's sending or is receiving data over the secondary stream, the command stream just effectively gets paused from the server side. So as long as you're sending data to the server, you can't send, it will not, what's the right word? It will not look at any new commands sent. So you actually have to close the data socket before sending additional commands. Now, with that, we have this video has been going on for 42 minutes, so I'm going to cut it off here. See you wonderful people next time.